Hi, Sean and Ashley with a quick Vectorworks tutorial. I'm working on a show right now that's going to use some fluorescent lights as part of the design elements like you see here in this rendering. And it reminds me that my students occasionally ask me how to do that, how to create fluorescent lights or, or neon tube light. Uh, and there's a couple of different ways to do it, depending on what you're trying to get at. If you're looking for just the look of it, like I have here in this rendering, there's a really terrific shortcut that I'm going to show you that can save you a lot of rendering time. Now, uh, this scene is in a, uh, a custom Renderworks scene, but it's not too different than a final quality render works. I, I tweaked with a few settings here and there, uh, but, um, but it's pretty close to what you would get from final quality render works. And I have the ambient light turned completely off in this scene. So it's just being lit by, I've got a couple of light objects out here in the dark that you can't see um, that are, are brightening up the scene, warming it up a little bit. But otherwise, the scene is basically being lit by these fluorescent lights. I'll show you the scene here. I've got a screen capture of it. This is the same exact scene with nothing else on. I turned off all the lights, ambient lights off. There's nothing on except for the glowing texture that's coming off of these tubes. Um, so even though it's kind of dark, it does actually give off the look of, of uh, fluorescent lights pretty well. And you certainly do get the look that the light is coming from these tubes up here. That's pretty cool. Um, so let me go ahead and show you how to do this and then some of the other options for this. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to um, OpenGL just so we're not waiting for it to re-render. And I'll zoom in to my light fixture here. And you can see it's, it's just four objects. It's a cylinder for the tube. It's a rectangle that's been extruded for the ballast up here. And then I've got these little end caps on either side there just sort of holding the tube in place. But that's really all there is to uh, to those lights. What makes it look like a fluorescent light is the glow texture that we're going to put on it. And the great thing for that is, is that you can apply that to anything. You can stick that onto a neon sign. You can trace out some cursive letters with a, a spline tool and then extrude along a path on it to make it, you know, a tube and then apply a glow texture to it and any color you want, any kind of neon signage or whatever uh, can be done with the same uh, effect. Before I do that though, let me do quickly show you the other way to go about doing this. It's the place that maybe has a, a little bit more uh, actual lighting control. If we convert things to a line light here, um, this line light gives us a little bit more. You need a specific lumen output here. Um, you have a little bit more lighting control. So you could take anything, either a line or a uh, any kind of surface area. You could take a rectangle or something like that and then turn it into either an area light, which is going to create like a, the effect of like a soft box, or a line light, which actually would be a really good way to create a fluorescent light as well if you needed to have that kind of control for it. You can mess with the color temperature and things. So there's more control, but do be aware that line lights and area lights take considerably longer to render. So all you need to do is make it look cool. You know, you're you're after the look of a rendering, like, you know, just give that to a director or, or, or make it look like uh, like that it's actually fluorescent lights, uh, then this little trick I'm going to show you is great. If you need it to be a little bit more controlled like actual fluorescent lights, the line light might be another way to go. Let's grab the resource browser here and I'll show you the secret to this, which is just a texture. So it's a RenderWorks texture. I've named it fluorescent here. And I'm going to go ahead and edit it and you can see what's all in here. So for my uh, Nia fluorescent light tube here, I've thrown a fresh Fresnel shader on here. And the reason I've done that is I just wanted to get a center color in here. If you notice, it's kind of a green cast. If you look down here into the scene, the light's a little greenish. Well, that's where it, some of that green light is coming from, this center color uh, in the inside of my, my Fresnel uh, shader here. So I've got the two lights. You're not really going to see it on the surface of it because the, the light is so bright. It's just, it's just blowing out the uh, the the air, the pixels to where you just have white. Um, but you are getting some green cast from that, uh, that Fresnel uh, shader there in the color shader. Uh, the real trick here is the reflectivity glow. Uh, so we've got all of the mirror-like things that we're used to seeing under reflectivity, but a few versions back, I think it was about in 12 or 13, we got the glow texture here. So when we go ahead and open that up, we have the ability to actually make the texture give off light, emit light. If you have emit light checked and you have this brightness set to something, and you can see that 100 is not the cap. I've set this to 300. I wanted it to be, you know, to look like the the uh, the, the fluorescent tubes were actually giving off light, not just being you know, softly glowing themselves. They actually wanted to be emitting light. So I pumped it way up here to 300%. And I don't know if there's any real kind of upward limit to this. You could see how high you could go with this. I haven't like tried any kind of crazy number, you know, 6,000 or something, but um, be interesting to see what would happen if you did. Um, and then I've left everything else the same, but you could throw a transparency on here if you needed to for whatever reason, or maybe you're the 
uh, you're doing a, 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 a some kind of glass shade that has some texture on it. You can throw a bump map onto it. You don't need to make the size anything other than the default one inch, but you do want to probably deselect the receive shadows. If your surface is giving off a bunch of light, it's probably not taking shadows. And again, you could use this for by changing the color. You don't even have the Fresnel in here. You could just give it a regular color and you could change the color of the glow to red or blue or whatever. You know, if you wanted to get the look of neon light, you could even create the sense of a, of a television screen or a computer monitor. You're also not limited to to just a color under the color channel. You could insert a an image of a picture on a computer screen <clears throat> and then use that glow down here and it would look like that screen with an image on it is giving off light. So there's a lot of flexibility here. It's really useful uh, for all kinds of things, pretty much anything that glows. So in, in future, instead of creating a sweep object for like a ceiling light glass fixture um, and then putting a, a point light inside of it and getting the, you know, fussing with the transparencies until it's just right. You can simply skip the light altogether, uh, create that sweet sweep object for the, the fixture uh, and then apply a glowing texture to it to make it look like that ceiling light is on, giving off light. And then just augment that with a couple of, uh, of scene lights from the visualization tool sets and, uh, and get the sense that you're creating a, a scene that is being lit by that glowing texture. So again, the, the trick here is it's not entirely being lit by that texture, but the textures themselves are giving off light, just like I showed here in this in this view as well. I mean, there really is light entering the scene from that glowing texture. So you know, pop in a couple of other invisible lights in there uh, to to get it to to look the way you want, and you very quickly a render that um, that's going to render a lot faster than if you were actually doing it with real area lights. This scene here is not a lot in the scene, so it didn't take me too long. Uh, maybe it's about a minute, minute and a half to render this at, at final quality render work settings. Uh, but if these were area lights, it would be several times longer than that. So it's a really powerful tool and it's really fun to start playing with and seeing what kind of things, how many things in life that we walk around with are actually emitting light and how your scenes can really look terrific with, uh, with a glow uh, channel turned on to your transparency channel of a RenderWorks texture. So go ahead and play with that and hopefully you can do some exciting stuff. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.